everyone, welcome um, and good afternoon to uh, our year-end webinar series, Visualize Your Success in 2020. My name is Yvonne Pelkey and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. When we kicked off this um, end of year webinar, one of the things that we talked about was you know, being able to provide business tools and resources that will help eye care professionals find their success. And it's great to see so many familiar names in our attendee list um, because I feel like we've been able to provide that value for you. Um, so our topic today, um, one of the things that you guys have asked for in the feedback was more information on um, marketing resources and campaigns and things like that. And so we are very excited to um, round up our year-end webinar series um, on dominating your digital marketing in 2020. Before I introduce our guest speaker today, just a few housekeeping um, items that I need to discuss. First is, as a reminder, this session is being recorded. Um, and to help reduce the background noise, we have you in listen-only mode. But feel free to ask questions. Um, utilize the chat feature within Zoom, uh, and we'll get those questions over to Kevin. Um, as I said, this, um, recording, this session is being recorded. Um, so at the end of the session, we will send everybody um, a link um, so that you have the recording. It will also be in our need help section within Edge Pro. Speaking of Edge Pro, um, also take a look in your chat feature within Zoom. You'll find a link for a free trial of Edge Pro. Um, so without further ado, uh, I would like to introduce our featured speaker, Kevin Wilhelm. Um, he's the co-founder and president of marketing for ECPs. But I also learned that um, a little bit about Kevin is that he is a published author uh, of a book called Click. And uh, I haven't had the opportunity to read that yet, but I'm very excited to hear more about what he has to say as it relates to marketing um, opportunities that will help uh, all of us be more successful as we enter into 2020. So Kevin. Great. Well, thank you so much, Yvonne. And uh, thank you to Edge Pro. I'm really excited to be able to speak with everyone today. Um, yeah, my, my name is Kevin. I have uh, co-founded a company called Marketing for ECPs. We are a digital marketing agency specifically supporting eye care companies across North America. And what today's presentation is about is really looking at what the digital opportunity is that's right, really right in front of us right now and taking the things that we've learned and what works, what's effective and putting it into sort of this 45 minute presentation. So I'm, I'm really excited to get going um, with everyone today. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk, uh, we're gonna start with a little bit of statistics. And so we're gonna move forward here. So some statistics of why marketing is, is is really important for eye care specifically is we know that 70 to 80 percent of consumers are researching companies before they book an appointment and we know that they're going to your website they're not just going to your website but they're also going to at least two other competitor websites so they're looking at about three um, the mobile shift happened a few years ago and what we mean by that is the majority of searches now and the majority of web traffic is now happening on our mobile phone. So if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you will have seen a shift uh, about two years ago from more traffic coming on desktop and it's now happening on mobile, which is really important to know just the type of experience that your patients are looking for while they're on their phone. Uh, the other one here is, is, is over 100 million searches are being conducted on Google every month between Canada and the US for eye care related searches. And what's interesting is that 15% of all searches have never been performed on Google before. So we know that there's so many people that are looking for what you're offering and how they're searching is also changing that it's really important to just invest time and energy into understanding this world. And so I really commend everybody for being on this webinar right now. Uh, when you look here, only 32% of businesses are investing in social media, 24% in online marketing, and 17% are investing in search engine optimization. What that tells me is that there is a massive opportunity. A lot of industries have shifted where the majority 
of companies are sort of forced to do these uh, sort of investments to stay relevant. And what's great is that, you know, for everybody here is there are massive opportunities that exist to be able to invest and do something that's different and really stand out. When you look at email marketing specifically, uh, only 26% of companies are investing and yet it yields a 38 to one return on investment. So really profitable. Uh, the most common marketing strategies are email websites, social media, this is one that, that Google has really concentrated on and it's the average business website right now is taking about 10 plus seconds to load on a browser. And why that's important is Google has now said that three seconds is the new normal. So they're actually looking to place websites higher up in search results for websites that actually load fast. And so when we look at our mobile experience of websites, it's not just important how it looks on screens, which, which does matter, but also how quickly it loads. Uh, when you look at how you're finding patients, word of mouth still is number one in this industry, but it is on a decline. And it's changed in terms of how word of mouth is happening. So if you look kind of year over year, we're seeing a 10% decline. It's being made up with online referrals. But what's important to know is that word of mouth is changing how. So it used to be you might talk on the phone or at, at, a, uh, you know, at a dinner table, at a party. Now it's all happening on social media. We're going online. We're asking for, you know, does somebody have an optometrist? I need to find one. And you will be referred, you know, if you were to do that, probably three, four, potentially up to five different providers. And then those pr prospects are actually clicking on and going to your website and deciding who's best. So even if you are being referred by word of mouth, they are still using your website as a qualifier for them to say, you know, do I believe in what this business believes in? So those are some stats in terms of why it's important to be marketing. Really today, attracting, retaining, engaging, encouraging, um, selling to patients online is just essential. It used to be optional. Right now we know and it said 95% of patients are going to your website. So we really need to focus in on how that user experience is happening online and happening on not only your website, but your social media, just your overall brand message so that we're saying the right things to these prospective patients. To start, we're gonna go and dive into the tools. Just overall, what are the tools available? And it all really begins with your website. And what's important about your website are just some elements that I have here. So, you know, we have the overall design conversion um, and I'm gonna speak a little bit more into those. But my point I wanna make about your website is when I talk to practice owners, so many times they believe that you know, the dispensary, the money that we put into that first impression when you walk into the practice, you know, that's what's gonna yield the highest ROI. And my comment to them is that your first impression is always your website. Even if it's word of mouth, we know that people are going to your website to make a buying decision. And how your website is set up and built will dictate whether or not you earn their business and whether or not they're going to spend money with you. Because if you go to a site that is, that looks the exact same as four other people that are on the same street as you, how are you differentiating yourself and standing out and really just being someone that, uh, you know, that is going to earn someone's uh, business. And so when we look at design and conversion and layout and all of these things, uh, as we go through this, the main point that I want to get across is that is your website unique to you? Is your website unique to your brand story and telling what makes you different than everyone around you? And then there's definitely uh, kind of tools here we'll get into. So as we cycle through and look at your website, I want to first talk about content. There is a website that you can go to and it's not on this slide, but I'll take a second to have you write this down and it's called Copyscape. So copyscape.com. And that website actually allows you to type in specific pages on your website to see if that content has been used previously on the internet. What we're finding is that in, in an effort sometimes to take shortcuts or to have a website built quickly, uh, we see that a lot of content is duplicated. And so it's been pulled from other websites. This is actually mm -hmm. not really beneficial to you in two different ways. One is it's not telling your unique story and what makes you different. And so as a patient that would be reading and trying to decide whether or not they want to do, to do business with you, they may have come across the same wording. It's not really your personality. And so it turns off some, some prospective patients. At the same time, Google is absolutely looking to see 
uh, if you've written this uniquely. Uh, Google's one of their main ranking signals is unique and valuable content to their users, which are basically all of us, people that use their search engine. So when Google analyzes and indexes your website and starts kind of referencing the, the content and headlines, they're trying to see, does, is this unique? And there, is there lots of good quality information? Uh, years ago, if you ever invested in search engine optimization, which is the process of having your site rank higher in search results for relevant keywords, you used to find sort of keyword stuffing and it was written for computers, you know, kind of like, you know, your local optometrist in your local city helping you, you know, see eye doctors in your local area. And you just see a lot of those words. It's important now that we start writing for people and we become the online experts and really have that authority in this space. And so uh, I really kind of implore you that when you're looking at your website, is your content unique? Is it credible? Does it make you look like an expert? And is it different than what else they're going to find in your sort of geographic area? Graphics is the next part. So we've already spoken about you want it to sound different. And graphics is now about having it look different. And why is that important? It's that it sets the tone for the actions that you want your patients to take when they come into your practice. So here's an example. If you're on this website right now, and at the bottom you see an ad, sort of a brand call out for salt, immediately your mind starts to go towards, oh, they have fashion frames. And I could see myself trying those on. So we start preconditioning our patients that, A, I wanna do business here because if all things are even, uh, in terms of perhaps medical and sort of the, the refraction, then I know that I can actually get high end frames there and when you start seeing the brands and they do a great job with their imagery, they know that they're expecting to spend money when they enter the practice. So really what you're doing is setting the stage that you have high end frames and that you have a solution for them for the people that are wanting to spend money. When we, uh, when we do strategy calls with clients, one of the things that always comes out is that we want to increase or our practices want to increase the average revenue per patient. They want to increase capture rate and they want to increase how much they're actually spending in the optical. And one of the strategies that, that always seems to work is just really highlighting and calling out these brands and making sure that your website speaks to that consumer uh, always on every page so that mm -hmm. again, when they walk in, the first impression was set when they booked the appointment that they know that they were going to do business with you. And that has worked really well. Um, other things is, is using graphics that uh, speak to the brand demographic, like the, the demographic of the personalities and the profiles of patients you want to attract. So I had actually had a call this morning uh, with a, uh, a potential new client of ours, and they had said, we see a lot of 60 plus. So we've sort of grown up with our patients and we want to start attracting a younger demographic. And that is very common that we hear across the board. And so part of the strategy is, does your website speak to that age demographic or is it speaking to current uh, patients that you have today? And so when you sit down and you say, okay, what do we want to really accomplish this year? And your website is a big tool in that, looking and saying, we need to make sure the images have family friendly, that we start answering questions about families or we show the brands that millennials want. So really just taking that time to strategize about who do we want to start seeing in the practice more? What are they looking for? And then building your website around that. The next thing is more technical, but really important. And this is about conversions. A conversion is an action that you want your prospective patients to take when they land on your website. Majority of a conversion is it's typically a phone call. So you want someone to call you and book an appointment. If you have a book online button, you definitely want them to book online. Uh, perhaps you're in a high retail location, you want them to just walk in. Uh, and really the last one is sending an email, but you know, that, that can definitely work. We're filling out a form. When you're building your site, I always sort of say to people, this is your most effective salesperson that you have. Your website will look the way you want it to look. It will sound the way you want it to sound. It never takes a sick day. Uh, you know, it, it always is there 24 seven and it, again, it sets the stage, but with every good salesperson, you want them to be able to close the deal. 
and you want them to take an action. So go from your current state of kind of just researching or gathering information and take one step forward and, uh, and purchase. So on your website, it's important to put various call to action and really telling your, you know, we call them users, but it's, it's, it's prospective patients, telling them what you want them to do next. So right at that, right at the top of the screen, having a book now button or call us today button, having your form on the page, uh, when you're showing your directions, have a map and directions button saying, you know, plug this right into your phone. If you're in the brand section, view our brands and on the brands page have, hey, come on in and book an appointment and try these on. So think about the actions that you want your, your prospective patients to take when they land in your site and call them out in large areas. A lot of times we'll see. Hey, Kevin. Yeah, of course. Hey, <laughs> sorry. So just a That's quick okay. question. So sure. last when we had our last webinar, it was all about maximizing schedule maximization. And one of the things that was highlighted was booking online mm -hmm. um, appointments. And there was kind of like a, like a good, better, best um, process, so to speak, to build that online capability. Um, yep. Some of the feedback that we heard was that there was some difficulties in um, being able to find a online system that integrates with um, a practice, particular practice management system. Um, so it ties directly into um, their scheduling. Um, have you or do you know of um, any sort of online capabilities that will or resources that tie into particular practice management systems that work best? What I have found is that most practice management systems are investing right now in online appointment booking uh, capability. And if they aren't, I would, I would definitely be calling them and asking them for that. Uh, there are calendar appointment functionalities like Calendly, like Calend.ly uh, that ties into Google calendars. So there are workarounds that you can have where, you know, your front staff might be managing two different systems. They might see a request come through and they can book online and they just have to quickly book it into the system and kind of, kind of keeping those two updated. Uh, but I would just, I would really focus in on trying to get your pen, uh, patient management software to have it come in. And uh, because that's the easiest, it ties right into schedule, you know, who's showing up and we're seeing more and more come in all the time. Uh, and what we're noticing is that new patients tend not to use that functionality out of the gates. They want to call, ask some questions, and then they'll book. What we're seeing is a lot of returning patients are the ones that will use that directly. And so um, for new lead generation, it, it can work, but we're finding that phone calls are the number one way that people are, are actually wanting to do business with you. Does that help, Yvonne? Thanks. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Course. Yeah, of course. Um, next, and this is really important too, is highlighting brands. And there's a couple uh, reasons why. I'm going to tell a story about uh, me actually going to Vision Expo a few years ago, and I brought my wife, and we were in the uh, Vision Expo West at Las Vegas. And my wife wanted to uh, wanted to find Kate Spade sunglasses, and so as we're on the strip, she opens up her phone, does a quick search, saying, you know, Kate Spade sunglasses near me, and because of two things. One, because the brand was called out on the website, it actually had a chance of showing up uh, in, in kind of an organic search engine results. And because I said near me, they knew that geographically that that optical was close to me. And so it showed up. Uh, it also showed up in an ad, which we're gonna get to soon. Uh, but having your brands called out, and what's important is more than just a logo. So here you can see on the left, there are logos which help with brand distinction. But below that, we actually have about 20 to 30 words of text that are written for that brand. And the reason being is that when Google actually indexes this, a logo sometimes can just be an image. And when an image is there, while your patient can see a Ray-Ban image, like a logo, Google doesn't necessarily know that that logo is the Ray-Ban logo and you carry that. So by putting in a couple sentences of text about Ray-Ban, it helps. And the opportunity that I would recommend is use that space to talk about not just Ray-Ban or salt, but why did you choose to bring it in and sell it? And this goes with every brand, product and service that you have. 
as a, a practice owner or an office manager, you've made a decision to carry these brands. And sometimes we forget sort of why we do, why we choose to carry them. And so this is a great opportunity just to take the two sentences and explain to your consumers, your patients, this is why we continually carry it. It's because they have a great brand story or the qualities there, or the, 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 it's very popular and people are coming and asking for it. Uh, so just instead of just copying and pasting what's off of their website, it's a great opportunity to actually take, to, to share why you chose to carry that. The next one is the structure. Saying, yeah, sorry. Uh, Kevin, so sorry. Like, no. this is a like great content. And what it reminded me of when you were talking about brands and products um, and building that into the website, it's also important that you update um, those as well. Because I definitely have looked at numerous um, websites and find that, you know, when, we, when, we, when we're doing whatever we're doing to help a particular client, they're website says one thing and then what we see is something completely different so um, making sure that we're highlighting and updating um, frame brands as they come in and out um, is important as well wouldn't you say absolutely and 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 you know even a layer back is hours of operation when you're going to be closed uh, nothing can build sort of brand discourse like disloyalty then you know they, they've researched and they've chosen you for a reason to show up and find out you don't mm -hmm. carry that brand anymore or that you've moved or your hours have changed. And so having your website updated is really important. Yeah, it's a great point. Uh, when you're laying out content, it's also important, we call this a site map, and you can sort of see the animation here of how the pages are built. Uh, it, when you have your different services, having an individual page for each service helps Google understand that you offer this service as kind of sort of a standalone. So when someone's typing in, and, and you're gonna see on the next page, here, uh, dry eye, uh, when someone's typing in symptoms of dry eye, like I have you know, dry, red, itchy eyes, uh, you know, I need help for this, Google can actually look at these web pages that are on your website, pull the fact that you talk about symptoms, you talk about solutions, and it'll show up as a sort of a, a page on the search result page to help your patients actually find like, oh, there's a solution for this and we can help you. And what I'm finding a lot of times is, is some people will have one page, they'll list all their services or all their brands on a single page. And when, what ends up happening is there's just not enough content for Google to pull. And from a user experience, when I'm there and I wanna learn, you know, can you help me with this problem, having an individual page built for all of this product services and, and brands that you have can really help educate and inform patients and say, okay, you know, dry eye is a thing, here's what I'm experiencing. Oh, I can actually get restasis. Okay, and they're learning, so when they come in, they're a much more educated patient. And, and when you make recommendations, they've actually already read these things on your website. So there's so much great knowledge that lies within our heads and, and within the practice. Getting it out onto a website in an effective form will really help rank higher and educate patients when they come in. Overall, you want to think about user experience. Uh, this was this is a a great experiment that we ran where I had a client once say that we really want to put eye care articles uh, or eye health articles right above the like right on the main page of the website and you know I wasn't sure but they thought it was important so we actually did a test and what we found is that users consumers weren't engaging with it and actually they were leaving so as they scrolled down the page and they saw the section about your eyes they were leaving the page, bouncing off and not making a decision when all of the great contact information was actually below it. And so what we ended up doing was, and you can see here, there's a massive drop off right here in blue. As soon as they read about your eyes, they just said, eh, I'm out. And so what we ended up doing is we, I'm just going back to this, we took a, a we swapped these uh, sections and we ended up finding that the blue line went all the way to the bottom. And so when we started talking about why the practice is different, why you should choose them, it caught their attention, they stayed on the page longer and the conversion rate increased. And so understanding how people are interacting with your website will help increase conversion rate, which means that you know, if you have, let's say 10 out of 100 uh, prospective patients call you and book an appointment, if you can increase that conversion rate to 15% or 20%, you essentially can double the amount of patients you see without spending more on marketing just because your website's performing more effectively. 
So really, you know, working with a company and understanding how your website's performing for you can impact your, uh, your business just because it's a more effective sales tool for you. Uh, you know, you really can't talk about websites without diving into SEO, search engine optimization. Uh, I'm going to go into a, just kind of a really quick analogy here. Um, it, it, I use the analogy and, and it's in the book and I'll talk about that at the end uh, of a bookstore. And so I wrote a book and I'll use the analogy that my book is like a website. And when I submitted my book to, let's say, Barnes and Noble, they have no idea who I am. I don't really have clout as an off author. And if I had named the book my name, it wouldn't be showing up in the bookstore. They wouldn't know what category to put it in. And so what SEO is, is one of the first things we do is actually identifying and changing the back end of your website to say what you do, where you do it, as opposed to who you are. And so a lot of times people will name their website their name or homepage. And so it's about changing that to say like, great optometry practiced in this city. And now, you know, Barnes and Noble, that's like me saying that this, this book is about digital marketing. They'll move the book to the right section and Google will start ranking you in the appropriate uh, keyword phrases. So that's sort of the first step. And we're always asked, you know, how do I show up in this section, these, these local SEO, the maps, and then right here at the top of the page. And from there it comes down to, and you can see it in the red, it's creating unique content that speaks about the topics that people are searching for and then having it shared, uh, whether it's on other blogs, uh, directories, social media. And so search engine optimization is, number one is getting the structure of your website sound and then creating unique, valuable content all about the search term that somebody is looking for. And when you write that great content, just sharing it and actually going out and putting it on social media, talking to other uh, medical blogs and saying, hey, would you like to actually re reference this article about st uh, strabismus treatment? Because you know, we, we created this great post about it. They start linking to it. Google sees all of this uh, backlinks to this great content and they say, okay, when someone's searching for business treatment, we need to show you up high because people are referencing this great content. And so that really is what SEO is about. The next step is the, is the, uh, is the, the ads above the fold. So right here is the single uh, most effective way that we grow a practice and it's through a term called search engine marketing or some people know it as Google search ads. Basically how this works is in the back end, you will type in to Google all the products, services, and brands that your practice offers. And the ad will only trigger if somebody in your area, so you get to define the geographic area around your practice. So they have to be within, let's say three to five mile driving. Uh, they have to be within that physical circumference, searching for products, brands, and services that we offer. And that's when the ads trigger. And you only pay when somebody sees that this ad is relevant to me, they click on it and they go to your website. So a great example here is somebody has typed in for business treatment in Calgary, which is the city that I'm in. This first ad says vision therapy. Okay. And the second one is for business surgery in children. So both of those ads, somebody's going to look and one is going to speak more clearly than the other two uh, specific person when they click on an ad, it costs them about two to $5. And if they don't click, if you're the ad that wasn't clicked, it doesn't cost anything. And so for all the people, we said there was 104 million searches happening every month on Google. How many people are, are searching and not finding you because you're not showing up? Well, ads are a great way to not only show up, but show up prominently and only pay when it actually works and brings these people to your website. And so it, to us, we're finding uh, it's, just, it's just the most effective way to grow the practice. The local kind of Google My Business section is also important. Uh, they used to have a five pack, seven, nine. They've settled on three at this point. So when you do a search, you're gonna find three. There are so many algorithms that go into determining who shows up here and who doesn't. Uh, location will matter. Uh, reviews matter. And if you're responding to reviews, matter. You also want to put photos, videos, and this is also a great place to list all of your brands, products, and services because that is also keyword searchable and will help show you up. So just make sure you've claimed your listing, you filled it out appropriately, 
and you're responding to reviews, both, both positive and negative. They're looking for uh, engaged business owners. Uh, Google's looking for that as a ranking signal. Uh, moving on, another great tool is something called display banner advertising or digital advertising. Uh, so many times people come to us and they say, you know, we ran a trunk show, we ran a sale, a buy one, get one or a percentage off. And we ended up only discounting uh, exact, you know, we, we ended up discounting to our existing patients that already were buying from us. It didn't bring in new people. And so it's, this is a fantastic way to actually take a promotion or a campaign, whether it's use it or lose it, uh, end of year, back to school and promote it. So you work with a graphic designer, you create an ad that sets a brand image with a big call to action and you can buy advertising on other websites like CNN, like weather, um, you know, weather apps, uh, online, uh, like YouTube, anything like that, these ads will start appearing. And what's fantastic is you actually get to target people based on demographics. So when we talk about trying to lower the average age of patient that you see, well, it all starts with strategy saying, let's try to get millennials in and buy sunglasses, if that's the campaign. Then we wanna target millennials based on the websites they visit and the, and the profiles we know about them, but the ad is gonna have a millennial, you know, either male or female, wearing the sunglasses with a good call to action to have them actually uh, click on an ad and go to your website. This is a fantastic way to build your brand locally, but also drive new leads and new patients into your practice. And uh, you can do this directly from Google. So Google has a, the same way you would be advertising search is the same way you'd be advertising here. So agencies can help you, but you can also go on and learn how to do this yourself internally. Hey, the, Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry. So we've no, got okay. several great questions that are coming through and I'm sorry to make you backtrack just a little bit. Um, no. But so it, several questions. So the first is, and you're probably gonna get this towards the end, but how often should we be updating our website, whether that's from you know, a content, whether it's graphics, whether um, you know, some of the other things you know that you spoke about um in yeah the, that's in, great so far to right now yeah so the critical information obviously needs to be updated in real time so if you add a doctor remove a doctor hours all of that needs to be up to date if you're adding content then it needs to be it's kind of a content strategy and so this is where a blog comes in and you say okay what do i wish people knew more about and what questions do I get asked a lot in the practice that I wish I could refer to an article that I've written? And so when you look at medical optometry specifically, it's a great opportunity to talk about dry eye, glaucoma, diabetes, vision therapy. Um, those are great reasons to write blogs. You have expertise within the practice. And so you know, one really good piece of content a month um, is, is more than enough. And, but the, the answer is, it really depends on how competitive your market is. So if you are downtown you know, Manhattan and it's just, there's a ton of competition, then a really robust content strategy can work. And if you are in a small town with not a lot of competitors, you don't have to create as much content. So it comes down to uh, what's happening around you, but it's never a bad thing to create unique and valuable content. Perfect, thanks. Um, Going back to reviews, and this is two different questions. So the first question is, does it really matter that you respond to review, good or bad? And then the second thing is, is there a HIPAA compliance issue that if somebody leaves a review and you acknowledge that they've been to your practice, um, is that a HIPAA violation? Um, so number one is absolutely, it's important that you respond and not only for Google, Google, like they're looking for that, but also future patients are looking for that. They want to know that you're engaged and that you can, you can meet their needs. So if it's a positive review saying, you know, thank you, um, definitely helps. And if, uh, if it's a negative review, my advice is take it offline. So thank them for their feedback say that it doesn't match your uh, customer service policies, but you would like to talk to them directly one-on-one -on -one offline so that you can resolve it. 
and then just ask them to do that. Once you've resolved the issue, uh, it's no problem to go and ask them to, to amend the review. So that's sort of the strategy we live by. And the HIPAA compliance, if they have gone on and told you that they're a patient, as long as you're not expressing medical information, uh, I believe that you're okay just to say thank you for uh, responding to, you know, thank you for leaving us a review. We appreciate it. Uh, because at the same time, they could have bought glasses. They could have bought sunglasses and just been a consumer. So as long as you're not talking about anything specific in terms of patient file, then you're okay acknowledging that they, that they purchased something from you. Uh, I believe you're okay to do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, on this page, we are taking the same concept of that digital display, but we're putting it into our social media platforms. Why Facebook and Instagram are great is that Facebook knows everything about us. They know more about us than we know about ourselves, mostly because of that single sign on button. So if you ever booked a flight through Expedia, you would have logged in through Facebook just to save you a ton of uh, time. By doing that, you are giving Facebook all this great information about you that advertisers can use to target people. So we know how much people are willing to spend, like price uh, elasticity, how, how, how do people buy online, how much do they spend on their clothes, how much they spend on cars. And so it's a great opportunity as an advertiser to actually target the exact demographic that you're trying to build your practice with is through Facebook and, and Instagram advertising. Uh, my favorite is YouTube. And the reason I love YouTube is that you get to leverage both sight and sound, meaning you get to make two brand impressions on a potential uh, patient. And so the same thing goes, you can geographically target a three to five or 10 mile radius around your practice, create a promotional video and target 25 to 44 year old females, uh, whatever the demographic you're looking for and only pay when somebody actually watches the video. So if someone skips the ad, it doesn't cost anything. They have to have watched you know, more than 15 seconds, more than 30 seconds to actually uh, trigger a charge. And so it's a fantastic way to build a brand uh, locally is through YouTube. So I highly recommend YouTube as a tool. Uh, patient communications, a lot of the patient management softwares have these built in. If they do utilize them, I think it's like the most underutilized uh, sort of technology that's out there. I know there's companies uh, that do just this with patient communications that you can sign on with as well. But communicating with your patients, making life easier for them will build loyalty. So reminding them about appointments, you know, two days before, one hour before, sending map and directions to new patients, uh, and then post survey, like ask them how their experience was. And if it's a 10, ask them, what did you, what, you know, what, what do we have to do to keep it being a 10? And if we're below a 10, what do we have to do to earn a 10? Those sort of things are just great to be able to have a two-way conversation uh, with your patients. That's really what people are looking for uh, out of their, their providers in any business they're really working with. Now we're so, going to jump hey, into, Kevin. yeah, of course. <laughs> Go ahead. So sorry. So um, in, in just follow up to your last slide where you were talking about, um, you know, appointment reminders and things like that via text message, have you found through your experiences um, and your tests, you know, that you do with each one of your clients, do you find that text messages are more effective versus email? Is there a switch going from you know, email to now text messages, like what's the, what's the balance? So 20% of emails are typically opened. Uh, that's just across the board, but 98% of text messages are viewed within like minutes. And so if you really want to get your, uh, you know, your message across text message is far more effective. However, some people look at that as sort of like their personal bubble. Um, so the, what I would recommend is ask your patients how they would like to be interacted with. So on the intake form, would you like us to contact you by phone, text, or email, and let them dictate to you? We're also finding and experimenting right now with Facebook Messenger as well, uh, especially when somebody comes onto your website for the first time, uh, utilizing Facebook Messenger as a way to talk back and forth. And so we know that humans have just changed their habits and communication is changing so rapidly that being able to adapt to what they are looking for is going to help no matter what. So if you, if they check the text message box, great, start using text message. And if they want to be emailed, then we respect that and we use, we use email. Yeah, I will say that, you know, one of the things, even just not only 
vision, right, when I get an alert that it's time for my eye exam, um, I love that because it comes through on my cell phone. And when I think about just my behaviors and what I do just as an, as an individual on a day-to-day -day basis, like I rarely look at my personal email. I might look at it, you know, two or three times a week versus you're a thousand percent correct. Like we have access to our cell phones so much now that it's instantaneous. And I love being able to confirm or reschedule, you know, even my nail appointment or my hair appointment, um, you know, all comes through my phone now, which makes it so much easier. And, and you think about it too, like when we were talking about earlier about um, booking online, like our days are incredibly busy. And even the audience here where we might have doctors or doctor owners, or we've got office managers who are on this call, like our days are incredibly busy. Um, so if we, if we step back and think about it from a personal perspective, I think having these resources makes life a little bit more easier and we can accomplish more when you think about it and you've got, you know, instantaneous access to be able to confirm or reschedule or book an appointment, you know, through an online resource or phone. Totally. Yeah. The good rule of thumb is, you know, we're all consumers and we all have doctors. And so how you, whenever you've been impressed with something and, and like something, it's a pretty good discussion to say, okay, how do we bring this in? But also talking to your staff because um, they're also consumers and totally different and we're all different people. So having those discussions at staff meetings of like, you know, who has a good kind of idea and communication ideas and marketing ideas generally works or else we become too focused in on what we like and what we think. So uh, just kind of a good tip to, to, to speak to everybody uh, that comes in, even patients, just, you know, what, how would you like to be communicated with? How can we better improve that communication is a, uh, is a great strategy. Um, and kind of speaking of strategy, when we look at sort of just a universal marketing challenge, it really is breaking it into two different buckets. The first bucket is connecting and capturing the demand, the people that are looking for your services today. So they're telling Google, I need an eye care professional right now. And the other ones are, I have not thought about an eye exam in seven months. And I am so busy as to your point of on that I'm not even thinking about this but we know we need an eye exam. And so how do we capture those people and speak to them to create demand for tomorrow? And so when you look at marketing, you really have to divide the strategies into the two things. It's how do I really capture all those people right now looking for me? Cause that's low hanging fruit and convince them to come in for an eye exam. And how do I re-engage and convince and influence all those other people that live in our area that we're a great provider so that when it comes time to book an eye exam that they instantaneously think about us. So when we're diving in, it's always that balance between generating leads for today, building a brand, which will generate leads for tomorrow. When we look at building a brand, the idea is really, uh, when you think about a product, you want it to be synonymous with your name. And so it's, it's and we're going to get into a defining marketing position uh, soon, but when you think about, uh, McDonald's and you know if McDonald's has built a brand over the course of 50 years that if you were to never see another McDonald's ad for the rest of your life but on your deathbed somebody asked you if you want a Big Mac you will know that it comes from McDonald's and so they have invested continuously that when you think about fast food hamburger you think about McDonald's and so when you think about your company and your brand what are the words that you want associated uh, with your, and so more than just being an eye care professional and optometrist and eye doctor in this area, what's the feeling that you want somebody to associate with your brand? And that's really what you're building a brand towards. And you can do that through advertising, through customer experience, all of that. Uh, when you build a brand, it's a long-term strategy. It's definitely a greater investment over time. You're trying to reach a lot of people uh, with the same message, but it has that residual ROI. And that's sort of what I mean. It, McDonald's has spent billions of dollars building that, but they could turn off all the ads and they will still have brand loyalty and people will still associate them for the rest of their life. And so it's a kind of a great case study to look at. Um, you know, you look at Nike as, as sort of that, that sort of behemoth uh, sporting goods manufacturer. Um, everybody knows Nike, but all birds in maybe probably 5% of people that are on the webinar have heard of them. They actually launched the most successful Kickstarter 
of all time, raising $150,000 in sort of a crowdsourcing campaign in uh, five days, but yet we don't know about it. And even though they've had massive success, it takes time, it takes investment to really build a brand. And so when you're looking at building a brand for tomorrow, and this really goes to any practice that wants to be around in 10, 15 years, investing some of your dollars, energy, and time into building a brand is it takes a while to become Nike, but you have to start somewhere and it starts kind of with patient strategy. So um, on that note, Kevin, yeah, of course. So like when you think about, um, you just said you have to invest into not only today, but tomorrow. Um, yeah. When I think about that, that comes with a dollar value. What is like, do you have like a, like a range in which we should um, dog ear, you know, funds specifically for marketing, such as our, you know, Facebook page, our web page, those sorts of things. Yeah. So great question. Um, in my book, I actually have a whole chapter on this because it's asked all the time is how much should I spend in marketing? The answer really is it depends on the objectives of the practice. If you are a startup and you have no patients coming in, then you need to invest a lot in the marketing. And it, it may not just be money, it's gonna be time and effort. If you're an established practice, you have five doctors, you've been around 30 years, then if the objective is to maintain or grow 2%, you, have to, you, know, you don't have to invest as much in the marketing. So it comes down to what is the growth trajectory? What's the objective? And so a good rule of thumb is, I say, look at what you spent last year in marketing and the revenue associated with it. And if you wanna stay the same, do the same thing. Everything stays the same. If you wanna grow, we know that growth is expensive. It costs money to acquire customers. And so I would earmark 10% of the incremental growth of your practice. So if you're at a million dollars as a practice revenue and you wanna grow by 10%, you wanna to grow to 1.1 million in 2020, then that $100,000 of incremental revenue, you wanna invest 10% of that. So I would add $10,000 into your marketing budget for the year. And uh, it's a great segue because we're going to talk about sort of what, you know, all the tools I just talked about with Google advertising and search engine optimization, digital advertising, those are great things to invest that in. But that's sort of the rule of thumb in terms of how to build a marketing strategy budget. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. I don't, I think a lot of us out here really don't know where to even to begin. Um, so I think that's a great rule of thumb. Thank you. Yeah, yeah you bet. Um, you know, alternatively to the building a brand, generating leads, it actually costs less because these people don't need to be convinced to get an eye exam. They just need to be convinced to use you. And so you're, they're already in the buying cycle. You can turn ads on and off and you can see quick results, which puts cash in the register that allows you to invest in future growth. So the best way here is Google advertising without a doubt. Those people today are telling you need, they need an eye exam. Your ad can show up today. You can capture them, you can book them and you can see them within the week. Uh, long term is building a brand, so it's a little bit different, but having a good mix is important. Um, moving on here. Oh, it's just stuck. Uh, I'm not sure why. Can you advance the slide? Thank you. So here's just kind of like a matrix that we use. So you have build a brand versus generating leads, long term versus short term. And you can see here, this is sort of where different product mix fit on the, uh, on the, the matrix. And so based on your practice, based on your objectives, this is sort of where you build your strategic plan is, am I a, a, am I a, a new practice? We need short term generating leads. Google search ads is definitely the way to go. If we're established, we want to keep brand loyalty. We want to grow kind of slowly. Then we're looking more up here. And uh, when you're building a, a plan, you know, putting this matrix down and saying, okay, well, what do we want to invest in? Do we want it short term, long term is really important. Uh, it, also, it all starts with a strong foundation. So we talked about a website, that's a strong foundation. Uh, but before even that, we have to define our position, our objectives, and then make sure our website aligns with that. So your marketing or your market positioning is really the significant difference by which you are associated, by which you are remembered, and for which you are valued. And so I'm gonna show you um, a couple questions here and ask yourself, you know, are you the center for medical, medical excellence? Or are you the family focused practice that, that sees kids all the time? Or are you modern boutique, high end frames, you sell multiple pairs, you know, in the thousands of dollars is the average patient revenue. Really understanding what makes you different will help define your position. And so think about three reasons right now 
of why your practice is or could be different than any practice within five miles. And it's a great exercise. So write down all your competitors on a piece of paper and say, what are they known for? And ask yourself, what are we known for? Why do people choose us? A, why do they come back? And that'll help you today with your market positioning about what makes you different. As you look for growth in the future, say, what do we want to be remembered for? What do we want to be known for? Because, you know, as we evolve our businesses, sometimes we look and say, there's a, there's a gap in the market. If I look at all my competitors close to me and they're all very similar, how do I stand out? And then you say, okay, what can be my differentiator in the next three to five years? And I'm going to build our product mix and our service mix and the brands that we carry. All of that is really going to fit in sort of the market positioning that I want to really take us into the future. And then you can hone it with a positioning statement. And a positioning statement is a very short summary that is memorable. So as we uh, look at a couple examples, Walmart, save money, live better. The entire idea of Walmart is save money on essential goods so that you have a higher disposable income which increases and improves your standard of living. So when Walmart decides to launch a high-end fashion line of dresses, it doesn't fit with their positioning statement, but offering your essential uh, paper towel and groceries at a low everyday cost does fit their positioning statement. When we look at your industry, you know, here's, here's an example of Airdrie Family Eye Doctors and their positioning statement is changing lives through eye care. So when they make decisions in their business, they're saying, does this match the positioning statement? Are we changing lives through delivering you know, quality eye care? And the last one here is Stony Creek, which in, even in their name, their eyewear boutique, which kind of positions them to be a little more modern, the technology is modern, and they're using really high-end frames. And so when you create that positioning statement, then you sort of build your business and your marketing plan around that and you start to attract the type of patients that you want to see, not just the patients that you currently are seeing. So here's some homework that you know, may change your business. And I have done this with our company and I've done this with a lot of clients is that just craft that positioning statement. It could be a great group exercise, again, at a staff meeting, is sitting down and saying, what makes us different? Why do people choose us the first time? Why do they choose us again? And then work on creating that sort of you know, six to eight word positioning statement that can be uh, you know, used across the board in your company, both internally and externally. When we get into objectives, Identifying your objectives for 2020, especially kind of this year, you know, it's, it's interesting, we're, we're in December, we're closing out the end of 2019. We wanna look and say, what do we wanna accomplish as a company in 2020? And writing those things down. And not just one year. I always recommend to look at three years out. So what do we, where do we wanna be in 2022? What do we want that financial statement to look like? And then sort of back it up and say, year by year, what do we wanna achieve? And, you know, so by doing that, it may not just be money. It might be, you know, what are the average patient revenue we're going to see? What's the average age? What's the demographic? What percentage of our sales come from medical optometry versus contact lenses versus uh, optical? And write it, kind of put that into a marketing plan. And then you say, okay, what areas do we need to focus on in order to achieve that? So do we need to generate new patients? Do we need to be more effective at that? than ever before, how is our patient retention, you know, we talk about growth in optical sales and perhaps you're deciding as a company that you wanna shift into medical kind of specialization for optometry. And so how do we actually launch that? And that's kind of a, a really good objective um, exercise. Lastly in this is saying, okay, if we're gonna put these objectives on paper, here's the goal of our business. Now I wanna make sure that all of our marketing efforts that we put out there all come back to achieving these objectives. And as we started the presentation on our website, I'm gonna go back to that and say, it's super imperative that your objectives and your market positioning is all captured directly in your website. And so, you know, that last sort of exercise I'll ask you to do is when you're done this webinar, go to your website right now and ask yourself, does this align with the market positioning and objectives that I've written down? So does the imagery reflect the positioning? 
Does the content speak to who we are and to the objectives that I have, whether it's growing a medical specialization, selling higher brands, does that have real estate and, and uh, high-end real estate on our homepage? Is it showing up at the top? Is it even included on what I want people to do when they come to my website? And so when you go here, we have Airdrie Family Eye Doctors. They talked about enhancing you know, patients' lives. This is an example of the optometrist right here uh, with her husband and saying that you know, we're part of the family. They're from a small town, so you'd probably see them in and around grocery stores. So it's a great example of them showing that family really matters. When you go to Stony Creek, that's sort of the modern eye care stylish eyewear. What a great example that the difference between what their objectives are. Uh, and you can even see here kind of an ad talking about, you know, the new standard for eye care. And you can see like even the artwork in the background, it sets the tone that when you come in, the type of experience you will receive and the type of price point that you will expect to pay. But what's happening is you're qualifying your patients that when they come to this website, they go, yes, I want to do business with them. And when they show up, they know the type of experience that they're going to get. When you're talking about website alignment, content is probably the most important. So you have graphics and you have content and you want to make sure that you have real estate, you have pages on your website that do talk about that difference. So if you're talking about enhancing uh, patients' lives, having a whole page about how you care for the community and, and what you're doing to support, whether you are uh, supporting a soccer team or uh, you know, a hockey team, put that type of information on your website because that is what people care about. Uh, one thing that's interesting is your about us page is the second most visited page on your website. Most likely it's what we find across our portfolio is that people go there because they want to know who you are, the personality of your brand. So don't scrimp out on your about us page. Really take the time to tell your story about what makes you different and why you are a great partner for somebody to come and see. Uh, here's another example. And just kind of in the sake of time, uh, we're just going to go through a couple here, but you can see these are all examples of real estate on home pages that are supporting the objectives. So that's sort of my time. Uh, we'll pass it over to Yvonne to do sort of a, a Q&A, but I do want to call out that I was very fortunate in 2019. It was a goal of mine to really help empower and um, educate uh, business owners with digital marketing. I know it can be sort of a black box and hard to understand. So I wrote a book. Uh, called Click. The sub tagline is transform your business through digital marketing. It's, uh, it takes about two hours to read and it goes through a lot about budget strategy, the different tools, sort of putting it all together. It's a very conversational read. Uh, and again, I was very fortunate. We launched in October and it did hit number one on, on Amazon bestseller for the marketing category. Uh, so I'm very fortunate for that. And so if you are looking for more information about uh, marketing specifically, the book is a great resource. Also, you can find me on LinkedIn and send me a message and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. So thank you for that. And Yvonne, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, so I, I think this is all great stuff. And Kevin, like we so appreciate you being on today. Um, you said this in a way that was incredibly easy to understand. I myself took about three pages worth of notes while you were talking. I, I couldn't write fast enough. So. One of the things that when, when we first started talking, um, and it was through conversations that we learned that we actually have a mutual client who is utilizing your services and what they found um, through Edge Pro was that their revenue was down, but exam counts were up. And I know you guys spent a lot of time diving deep to really understand you know, what was happening. Um, and here's, you know, just another example of, you know, a practice per se, if I'm looking, um, you know, at my sales matrix here, and to get there, I went to advanced reporting, scroll down to sales matrix. Um, and what I did here was I changed my date range because I wanted to, I knew that my exam counts were going down as well as my revenue. And I wanted to see trends over time. And I took this back several years. Um, so I changed this to by year, um, and then what I did was I could see down here at the bottom, so this is 2017, my new patient versus my existing patient, my total exams, and then my total revenue collections are across the top for each year. 
and you know definitely it makes sense like right i went up in my revenue total revenue collections in 2018 i had an influx of patients um, but then as i'm looking at 2019 i'm going back down again um, and my patient count is down and i can tie those two things together so being able to you know hear what you had to say today um, and the key points in, in some of your conversations was like, we do a great job of um, marketing to our current patient base, but what we're not doing is reaching out to the people that we want to be taken care of as well. Um, that was a really big um, take back for me. Um, cool, yeah. I was just gonna chime ahead. in and say that the, uh, yeah. The kind of the story that, that I had and, and was sharing that is uh, very interesting and something that I saw really valuable in the software is uh, it, was, it was about two years ago and uh, they had launched a new marketing campaign and when they looked at the financial statements they saw flat it was, it was flat um, quarter over quarter but when we actually dove in using GPN and actually diving into uh, the edge pro like and the, the dashboards we saw that new patients were up and total exams were up uh, what we noticed through digging in is that the upsells and capture rate had fallen uh, specifically with their rock star optician. And so mm -hmm. someone they had relied on as being that sort of rock that, uh, you know, they realized that their numbers had dropped significantly. And so they went and investigated, they came back and the discussion we had was we actually didn't have a marketing issue or sales. We had a HR issue. And they were able to take mm -hmm. that information and help support this person uh, with what they're going through in their life and provide them the type of support that they needed. And they saw the numbers come back up. So the, be, the ability to use a dashboard like this to really tell you what's going on, a lot of assumptions are made on financial statements. But what I love about a dashboard and the technology that you guys have is that it allows you to dig deep and find out the real story of what's going on. And so I, I'm a yeah. huge advocate. I, I think it's great. Well, thank you. And what I learned in going through this process was, you know, in this particular instance, not really so much about staff, but it's more about the managed care plans. And when I dove in a little bit deeper, I found, oh my gosh, like VSP is significantly down. Davis Vision was significantly down. And what is it that we, why, first of all, is, under, is understanding that, but second is now how do we go back and find um, these patients again? Um, so, you know, I loved your story and I loved that, you know, there was, you know, the mutual client was there and how you utilize the, the software to uncover, you know, a bigger issue um, and being able to resolve it um, in, a, in a positive aspect. Um, one additional question um, came through are what are some other advantages or reasons why people choose a family eye care choice? Um, he, this particular individual didn't set out to brand their practice as that, but it is what it has become. Um, so I, that's your question. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I think the trap that we fall into sometimes is, and I'll ask a, a new client, I'll say like, what makes you different? And they, they struggle with that. And they say, well, I'm, I'm the same as everyone else, or I'm, I, you know, we all offer the same thing. And so, you know, the different tips here are, one is what's what's what are people looking for in your market so in your business if you're finding that a lot of people coming to you are families and that's the opportunity and obviously you're doing something right in your business because you continually attract families then the advantage is that you may be the best family eye care practice in the market and so that's where i would lean in on that and go all in and the testimonials and like the, the imagery is all about family, maybe adding a little bit in the practice to a kid's fun area or, uh, you know, just some games or whatever to keep them engaged and just become more about that. If you really dislike the family side and you just, that's not where I want to go, um, you know, then it's tailoring the business model to support where you do want to go. And that's having really high in frame. It's not carrying children's lines of sunglasses and, and eyeglasses. Um, so when parents come in, they don't really feel comfortable. And, you know, the price tags and all of that, uh, you can kind of turn them off. But my guess is if you're finding a lot of families, you're doing a lot of things right to make them feel comfortable, refer you and come back. And so to me, an opportunity is, is uh, go all in. So I'm seeing here you wrote the goal is sports and outdoor. So 
in that case, having that, uh, even on the, the hero of your website, it's when somebody lands there, having children or, uh, you know, wearing the goggles. Like my son, um, you know, the first time he played soccer and he had to line up for a penalty kick, he got hit in the face, um, he's wearing glasses. We immediately went and got sports goggles put on. And so having real estate on your homepage about that, letting people know that you offer those things can absolutely help. We've since put them in contact lenses, which is another thing that you can speak to so that when parents book eye exams, they know, oh, I should talk to you about contacts or sports goggles because my son's playing baseball, he's playing uh, basketball, and we don't want that. So again, the objectives of the practice, put that into your website and have collateral on hand. And then also uh, train all of your staff to ask certain questions that allow you to have the conversation. So when they come in and they're booking an eye exam for a child, say, do you play sports? Like even just as they're booking or they're coming in, knowing that on the file that it's a yes under they play sports, it allows you as the optometrist to actually open that conversation. Say, oh, it says here that you play sports. Have you considered sports goggles or contact lenses? Because we know that recommendations from doctors lead to sales. And so kind of working as a team to say who asks the question, who makes the recommendation, uh, but having it on the website to precondition the parents uh, would definitely help. You know, one of the things, Kevin, that as the question came through and what you were saying, I was sitting here thinking, oh my gosh, like he's going to have a practice for 20 and 30 and 40 years. So where most of us are trying to plan for 10 years, he's got to plan 50 years out because he's already got to that, that base. Like he's seen young families and I think about, you know, my own daughter and taking her to a doctor and now she's an adult and she still continues to see that same doctor. And when she starts having kids, she's going to take them to that same doctor again. So there's generations of family members staying within this particular practice. How amazing is that? Um, so it is about 3.07, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in and being part of our um, year-end webinar series. We are so thankful that you guys have been with us for six webinar sessions now. Please take a moment. There will be a survey link that will pop up here in Zoom in just a moment. Take a, please, your feedback is um, critical for the success of our uh, future webinars. Kevin, Oh my gosh, what a great way to end our series. Thank you, thank you so much for um, you know, reaching out and asking, can you be part of this? Uh, it was a, a last minute ad and we're so thankful that you were, that you're here. Um, I, there's lots of great information and I'm sure everybody that's on this call took back an exorbitant amount of um, you know, things that they can implement into their own practice and their website. For additional questions, um, Kevin's email address is up here. Um, and if we get anything, Kevin, we'll, we'll funnel them over to you. Again, thank you, everybody. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in 2020. Thank you.